in the pasture, run them in the pen, work them on the Sundays, do it all again, race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddle Brock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. He said you're watching it, so he knows about stuff. Stuff's going down. We've got a big show for you today. A lot of things are happening around town, especially in Fort Worth. Uh, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we've got uh, some PBR action coming up in Fort Worth, Texas at the Dickies Arena. And uh, we're going to visit with Cody Nance here in a little bit about that. Uh, our musical guest, Karen Waldrop, just released a new song. So we're going to check that out and visit with her. Um, let's see. We've got uh, your favorite, your favorite, favorite stuff, Odd News. We've got some good stuff for that. We've got your bear trapped in a car. Somebody got rich under the fridge or the icebox, however you say it. And someone set a Guinness World Record because everybody loves those with a toilet paper head. So why they did that, I don't know. And you're like, what's wrong with this guy? And why does it look like a bear? Well, stuff is happening in uh, Fort Worth. The Yellowstone prequel is going down, uh, filming over in Fort Worth, Texas. So we got a few little behind the scenes shots of that for you. Uh, hot off the press, the uh, season four of Yellowstone will come out on November the 7th. We'll get to that in a minute. Uh, we got some of that going on. And so, yes, I have to look like an unshaven person from the olden days because they do. But here's the thing. You're not going to recognize me because they don't have these glasses in the 1800s. You're going to be like, I didn't ever see them. And that's the point because the checks cash anyway. So we got a lot of stuff going on today. A lot of good things are happening. A bunch of horse sales coming up and stuff. But uh, what we want to get this thing kicked off with right off the bat is something going down in Fort Worth, Texas. So check this out. See what we think about this over in Fort Worth. It's about to happen uh, August 28th, 29th. And after that, we'll come back with uh, one of the PBR superstars himself. Professional bull riders return. Bigger, bigger, better, better, bolder, bolder. For an all-new 2021 season. Maybe, just maybe, the impossible can happen. Join us for the PBR Tractor Supply Company Iron Cowboy. Presented by Ariat, August 28th and 29th at Dickey's Arena. There is your proof! Get your tickets at PBR.com or Dickey'sArena.com and find out what it means to be cowboy. Find out what it means to be cowboy. And somebody that knows about that is this man right here, Mr. Cody Nance. Live is fun. There you are, Cody. What is what's going on? What are you up to tonight? Oh, uh, just over here at uh, Nashville, doing a little promotion stuff, getting ready for this event, and and now chatting with you about the Iron Cowboy coming up in Fort Worth. We're pretty excited about that. Man, the Fort Worth that that Dickies Arena they uh they really done it up for rodeo over there. They wanted a little bit a little bit bigger and better than uh, than what they had down the road, and I think they pulled it off. Yeah, you know, I, I think so, too. Uh, the Dickies Arena, it's a really, really nice venue. Uh, really cool to be able to get over there and, and like we was talking about, the Iron Cowboy, be able to fun function that event in there. I think it's going to be really good. Uh, from what I hear, there's not a good, not a bad seat in the house, so it should not, be good. Yeah, not at all. Should be should be a nice a nice uh, event coming up. So we're getting, you know, the, the season's about halfway, somewhere in there. So, so how are you holding up going into, into the rest of the season? Oh, actually holding up pretty good. Uh, you know, year before last, I suffered a few injuries, dislocated shoulder at the third round of the finals that year, put me out for seven months. And so I, I kind of had to work my way back up a little bit. And, and so far, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm feeling pretty good. I've, I've lost some muscle and different things since – uh, October last year, I, I missed the finals by like 100 points, first time in a dozen years. And so uh, I'm very thankful to be healthy and back to riding good. Just um, 
Yeah, I felt like uh, maybe just cut a little muscle. Like, you know, I took some advice from Cooper <laughs> Davis, the champ, you know, and mm -hmm. he, he cut a lot of muscle and a lot of weight and stuff, and it helped him. And so, uh, yeah, there's there's been a few changes, but uh, really, really good. I, I'm, I'm healthy, and I'm happy to be back. So right now uh, we're all looking forward to this event here in Nashville, and next weekend, uh, obviously, we're going to be coming in and running. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're sitting pretty good. I guess you're sitting, what, about 20, somewhere 20, 29, somewhere in there. So, I mean, you're, yeah, you're, you're, you're sitting, you, you're sitting yeah. good. Well, you know how it is as a, <laughs> as a competitor. You yeah. always want to strive to be up there on the top of the Oh, list. yeah. So, you, I mean, but get, getting there, getting there is part of it. There's a lot of guys that, that wish, they right. could, wish they could get up in there. So, so it works. Now, now you've got, uh, over the years, uh, you've got a few kiddos. So, what's it like for you now? going out and being on the road and stuff, you know, with, with the kids, the wife and kids and all that, how's that work for you? Uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, when I can drive and stuff, my kids will go with me on the summer trips and it's really fun. My wife, she's awesome. She's a registered nurse. She went PRN so she could travel with me a lot more. And so then, uh, you know, uh, Corey and I travel with the kids and take a camper and, and, you know, we're liable to go up to Cheyenne or wherever we can, you know, and put, four or five thousand miles on the vehicle that year but uh you know it's it's a job also you know we show up and and we got to ride our bulls because they don't pay us to come and <laughs> and show our faces they ain't that we ain't that pretty so <laughs> you know we we have to show up and stay on our bulls that's what we get paid to do and, and fortunately we have the best bulls in the world to be able to go out there and compete on so it's it's not a it's not a lacking matter of whether the stock can bring us that score or not. It's whether we can bring that score on our end. Right. Right. So what are your, your kids, you know, your kids now they're growing up, they're getting a little bit bigger and they're being around rodeo with you. So what is their, what is their outlook on the rodeo? Does any of them have any interest in that? Or are they just, just glad to be there? Well, I got a little six year old that absolutely <laughs> loves it. And uh, his older brother, he he's all into football right now. And, you know, then uh, they got a sister that's 10 year old. So I got them 10, eight and six. And uh, I'm pretty sure the youngest one might've got a touch of me in him. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, maybe that bull rat, you know, I, I feel like when I was young, bull riding just chose me. Yeah. I, you know, I was, I think at probably two years old when I decided that I was going to be a bull rider. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I didn't get to get on until I was 14. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, I started, I was team roping. And um, I enjoyed that. That was what my uncle, he was competed, He was a competitor and I was young and I, I'm pretty sure my parents were just trying to stray me away from bull riding, but um, I really enjoyed team roping too. I just enjoyed yeah. everything, you know, being on the back of a horse growing up, you know, mm -hmm. it taught me a lot. And um, as you said, there's a bunch of horse sales coming up there. Are you going to be going to any of them? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We were in uh, yeah. Bowie, the big uh, catalog sale in Bowie. We were up there. Uh, a couple weeks ago, and then we're headed this weekend to Anderson. They got one there, and then we're back, back in Bowie, uh, back in September. That big sale, so we're we're hitting all the sales. Oh, good, good. I'm sure there's some nice horses coming through there. Oh man, there's there's some there's some nice some, there's some nice stuff coming through. Um, talking about going with the family and traveling around. Uh, if you you know when you get some time off, you get some downtime. What is your ideal vacation spot? to take the family to? You know, I live a half a mile west of the Kentucky Lake and there ain't no place like home. <laughs> uh, we go out there and, and we'll swim in that lake. We can fish in that lake. And and then there's the uh, 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 the state park right there. It's beautiful. And uh, we're up in West Tennessee. And so um, there's plenty to do. We, we really love just kicking back at the house and, and hanging out there. Yeah. Uh, with our animals and you know we're, we're comfortable we spend so much time on the road and and away from each other it's nice just to be back where our roots are yeah just sit back yeah. and relax now uh tell me about this uh mechanical bull deal you got going on tell me about that all right so uh tomorrow we got a few mascots here in nashville uh I believe we got the soccer club mascot, we got the uh, Sounds mascot, and the Titans mascot all coming together for competition tomorrow down at Bridgetown. <laughs> and so that's going to be fun. We got we named our bull Tarzan, so right. we're going to get them compete on Tarzan. And then Saturday, <laughs> we're going to take a $10 entry fee 
and everybody can compete and ride until you know for the longest time. And then uh, we'll take uh, that'll be from two thirty to five. And then uh, at at the end of that, we're going to take another. Well, it'll be the top sixteen. We'll come back for a championship round. But if you just want to try your hand at Tarzan <laughs> for fun, you can pay five dollars. It's a general admission charge. Just get on and have enjoy a ride. But um, yeah, we're going to be doing that tomorrow, and uh, that is actually going to take place Saturday too. So the okay. competition will. Right. Yeah. So are you going to load up old Tarzan and bring me to Fort Worth? Oh uh, well. We'll talk to PBR and see if they want it there. You, you think of anybody that might want it? Let me know. Yeah, I mean that'd be that'd be good. That'd be a good deal. Good show. I mean, get them on, right? Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Really, I like riding it. Some somebody when they found out you was coming on today, somebody sent over a question, and uh, they were wanting to know where the uh, where the handkerchief, you know, the neck throw, where that came from. Oh. I started wearing a neckerchief when I was real young. I figured it was, it was one of the, it, it's, you know, you watch old cowboys in the movies wear them, and and growing up outside, you know, in the Tennessee heat, humidity, <laughs> uh, you can wet that thing down tight around your neck and cool off ten degrees real quick. Mm -hmm. Or you know, you get that cold winter wind coming through there, that that wet wind, you tie it around your neck, and warm up ten degrees. Yeah. So you know, I that's just the way I I was raised. You know, we know. Uh, that you know that around your neck is common sense really i mean you know but i don't know i started praying about it one day and i thought what can i do that's different you know because everybody had their thing yeah and um I said well you know I, I felt like the lord shared with me you know you have something that you could share and uh and it was a good opportunity to be able to share and so i uh i felt led to write uh, romans 10 9 on there and pray over each and every one that i would send out Mm -hmm. uh, however, now COVID has put an end to that. We cannot <laughs> can't throw it out. <laughs> we <now>. cannot <laughs> any longer share any of our stuff with, yeah. the fan, with the fans because they think it might be, uh, um, I guess, covered with COVID. However, we <laughs> test a couple times a week and right yeah. before the event was. But whatever, it's all good. We got to make the precautionary measures that uh, keep everybody safe and keep everybody comfortable. And that's why PBR was the first one to come back last year in competition yeah. at all the sports. So, yeah, we're thankful for them and every everything that they do. All right, all right, Cody. Let me ask you this because I I seen something about some marinade. So when you're out there, out there in Tennessee, you got the grill fired up. The family's hungry. They want something to eat. What's on that grill? Anything smothered in Allegro. <laughs> Allegro, all right. You ever heard of Allegro marinade? I have. I have. Oh my goodness! It's distributed right in my hometown. Uh, one of my sponsors, actually, and I'm not just saying <laughs> get your Allegro because they pay me <laughs> because yeah. they endorse me. I'm telling you, I've been using it. It's been one of those uh, companies that's been around since the '60s, I guess, and my family's used it since before me, and. Yeah. Uh, it was a little family-owned store, and they support rodeo. They love rodeo. They've given out so many scholarships to UT Martin, and they sponsored our event, the PBR in Paris, this summer mm -hmm. as our head sponsor. And uh, I tell you what, they make an, an, a, a, a marinade, all kinds of different flavors. And, um, oh, yeah. you know, I, I'm not real picky about my meat. I like, I like steak, chicken, shrimp, pork chop. I like it all. But uh, I like steak. You can't go wrong with steak. And um, <laughs> no. if you're going to go with steak and Allegro, I would do the black pepper. Black marinade. pepper. I've done the spicy. Yeah. I do the spicy. I like that on my jerky. Yeah. I like yeah, it. Yeah, that hot and spicy is good. All right. Before we let you go, you got any other sponsors that kind of helped you get up down the road you want to throw out there? I do. I got uh, Cooper Tires, National Tire and Battery, Wrangler, and uh, Allegro. So those are the four companies that they help me get up and down the road and Cooper Tires, obviously, they they get my keep my truck rolling and uh, rolling steady. I tell you what, I can't wear those tires <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, National Tire and Battery for any of your any of your needs, uh, vehicle wise. You know your uh, your maintenance. You can stop in there and they can hook you right up and and sell you a set of Cooper Tires, probably. So, uh, All right. yeah. And of course, Wrangler. They, oh yeah. They keep your pockets clean. <laughs> All the time. <laughs> All right, Cody, man, we appreciate you visiting with us and uh, let you get back to it and. Uh, Good luck down the road. Thank you, sir. You too. Appreciate it. Good talking to you, baby.
Thank you. See. That's the man, Cody Nance, right there. Getting stuff, getting stuff done. Getting stuff done. Speaking of stuff done, what something got announced that was yellow that's gonna happen in November. What is that? Hey, you're John Dutton, aren't you? Set, set your DVRs if you got one. If you got a DVR, set it so you don't miss it. November seventh. I don't know why they picked the seven. Seven SC Ranch dot com. Seven. I don't know why they picked the seven, but hey, they did. So anyway, yeah, Yellowstone going down to Fort Worth. There's a there's a few little uh, not behind the scenes in front of the scenes shots for you from uh, from Yellowstone. So check that out. It's going down. They're filming stuff over there. So Fort Worth, Fort Worth is going to look like it did back in the, the heyday of Fort Worth, right? The heydays of Fort Worth. So that's what's going on. And that's why I look like Shaggy from Scooby-Doo because I have to look like I'm in the 1800s. So uh, they got a lot of stuff going on. You know, I, I'm going to do a couple of things with them over there in Fort Worth. I'm not not going to do the, uh, the long trek. You know, I didn't want to do the... The six month deal or six week deal. I turned that down. Didn't want to do six weeks. I got way too much stuff going on to be gone from the house for six weeks, but I'm happy to jump in here and there over in uh, Cowtown and do some stuff that you'll never see because I can't wear my glasses. So you'll never know, like a ghost, right? Uh, that's happening. And then uh, there is a. Netflix, let's do a Netflix. Let's do a Netflix uh, trailer for the peoples. Um, you're gonna enjoy this. There's a Netflix show coming out. For those of you speaking of Yellowstone, you would you watch Yellowstone. Everybody watches Yellowstone and like, I want to be a cowboy. I want to be a cowboy. There's guys that are going and quitting their CEO jobs and high rise downtown jobs to go work. They work on a farm because they watch Yellowstone and they got entranced. So. People are doing that. So on Netflix, September the 1st, there is a show coming out that is going to teach you how to be a cowboy. So check this out. The cowboy life is about tradition. We are self-reliant and answer to no one. Yes, Mom. Can you tell your mom I said hi? Welcome to Radiator Ranch. There's a lot to learn from our way of life, so you may as well learn it from the best. The one and only, Dale Brisby. Woo! Through social media, I brought our traditions into the future. Now I'm bringing them to you. He works harder than he ought to, so it's my obligation to work less. We're training the next generation of cowboy here. And when you're working on Radiator Ranch, you're my responsibility. Rodeo time, Chicho. You ready? Go, 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 go. I haven't had this much fun since a buy one, get 10 free Taco Tuesday. I'm the first female intern, and I'm a bull rider. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. There you go. She's actually more cowboy and tougher than all of us. Smell that arena dirt? It's rodeo season. It's manure, too. It's part of it. Are you crying? It's a circle of life. I appreciate Mother Nature. If you don't, then you ain't no cowboy. Oh, yeah. One, two, three. If you're not a cowboy, go step in here. It's all about good TV, Netflix. So there you go. You want to learn how to be a cowboy? Check it out. And if you pay attention, you're like, wait a minute, I think I know that person. Jordan, the female intern, Jordan, if you remember back in the old days, she was uh, one of the show's featured athletes back when she was spurring those muleys. So it's good to see her out there continuing doing what she enjoys doing. And if you enjoy horses and selling stuff, buying stuff, there are some horse sales coming up that you don't want to miss. All right. Uh, this Saturday, 
Uh, Red River has a sale. They had a catalog sale coming up, and then there's another sale Saturday in Red River. There's also a sale in uh, Anderson. We'll be we'll be at the Anderson sale, so go check it out. The uh, Bowie live Bowie livestock they have a sale catalog sale first of every uh, first of every month. Check it out. The Exit Ranch sale is coming up. The Legends of Texas and everyone's favorite, the Fitzer Ranch catalog sale. If you want to, if you want an all around using horse, the Fitzer Ranch is where you get them because that's what we've been. I've been riding those for years. And I'll tell you, you will not find a better all-around using horse than you will at the Fitzer Ranch. So if you're interested in some horses and want to buy some, do it. The market's up right now, too. If you want to sell some, you may get some good dollars for them. Also, speaking of horse sales, when I was at the, when we were at the Bowie sale, we, in their catalog, I noticed something. There is a channel on Roku, and it's called Stir. It's S-T-I-R-R. And it's called Stir, and it's a channel, a free channel on the Roku. And if you go to the Stir channel, they have the horse shopping network on Stir. And so whenever the buoy sale is going on, you can go to that link, that app, and scroll down to horse shopping network. or the, It's a horse shopping network or horse shopping channel, one or the other, but they sell horses. And you can watch the buoy sale live on there. Or you can go, you can watch it on the cattle US, I think it's Cattle USA website where you do all the live bidding and stuff on there. But uh, you can also watch it on Stir. I didn't know that because we were watching that on the TV in the snow cone trailer. But uh, that's, that's some good stuff, some good sales coming up. Uh, some other stuff coming up is the day work challenge. There's another day work challenge going on in uh, Terrell, Texas on the 28th of August. Go out there, take your horse, load up and go. It's 50 bucks. There's three different things you can you can sign up in, three different events you can sign up in. Or if you sign up in all three and go for the all-around, there is a nice buckle for that. But the, uh, the day work challenge is it's a fun deal. You go in there with a breakaway. Your rope's got to have a breakaway hondo on it. You go in there, and there's a like a round pen atmosphere set up. You got to pin a cow. So they pull There's All these cows got numbers. They call the number. You find your number, and you put it in a pen. Now you can't go 90 miles an hour like your your uh, ranch sorter types. They like to go in there and blow their horses up 100 miles an hour and scatter dirt and everything else. No, this day work challenge is more of a reflection of day working on the ranch. When you're at a Brandon, when you're at a Brandon, you don't run into the running there 100 miles an hour sorting the cows off. You know you got you work them slow and easy, and that's what you do. And then there's like a, there's a, a brand, it's, it's a ranch, it says ranch roving, but it's more like ranch branding where you go in there and uh, numbers called, you ride in, you don't run 100 miles an hour, you walk in, trot in, you find your cow, you throw your rope on it, and when the breakaway pops, your time stops. And then you've got another event that, uh, there's other associations that do these, these type of events, but none of them are doing the loose cow catch event, which is a more... Uh, wide open, fun, flying off the walls event to where you can actually run. And what they do is they put a steer in the chute, they let it out, they give it about a 30 foot score, and then you take off as fast as you can. You go rope it and let your breakaway pop off. Now, the theory behind the loose cow catch is just like at the, um, at the Brandon when you're working cows, generally there's going to be one crazy SOB that's going to jump the fence and run off. And what do you do? You got to go catch her. So that's kind of where the loose cow catch came into this rather than doing some of the uh, more laid back events that the other associations do. But it's, it's good. It's a fun time. Entry fees are low. I'll be out there. So just go out there and and uh, check that sucker out because it's going to be it's going to be a good time. Um, what else is going to be a good time? is a Clint Eastwood movie that has came come out. You need to check this out. And uh, it's called Cry Macho. It's a Warner Brothers. A Warner Brothers uh, released this trailer of Cry Macho. Uh, September 17th, you're going to be able to watch it in theaters and HBO Max. Uh, Eastwood's going to play a former rodeo star and a horse breeder. I don't think he was breeding the horses. I think the horses were breeding themselves, but that's how they wrote it. So anyway, in 1979, 
don't Google horse breeders because you'll get the wrong videos, guys. Um, so anyway, this here, this is the trailer for that. Just to give you an idea about this show. So uh, Eastwood is 91 years old in this show. He's 91. Uh, he last starred in the film The Mule, which he also directed, and he also did the uh, Rachel Jewel. Uh, so I don't know. Check this out. See what you think about this. Are you going to watch or not? Back when we had winners, I was afraid to lose you to the competition. Five times you won the All-American. That was a long time ago, wasn't it? That was before the accident. Before the booze. You know how many people told me to just cut you loose? You going to say anything? Howard. I've always thought of you as a small, weak, and gutless man. But you know, there's no reason to be rude. You owe me, Mike. You gave me your word. And that used to mean something. My son, Rafael, he's in trouble. I want to get him out of Mexico. You want me to go down there and kidnap him? Please, just get him back up here. Just you? Just me. Rafael, you can come out now. I'm a friend of the family. Touch me and I'll kick your ass, old man. Jesus Christ. Get in the back. We go and I tell you, okay? Look, the only place you're gonna go is the hospital. You get too angry. It's not good for you. You used to be strong, macho. I used to be a lot of things. But I'm not now. Now I'll tell you something. This macho thing is overrated. Just people trying to be macho show that they've got grit. That's about all they end up with. It's like anything else in life, you think you got all the answers. I'm Mike. Marta. And you realize as you get older, you don't have any of them. We all have to make choices in life, kid. You have to make yours. His name is Macho. Like me. Very strong rooster. Whatever. What's wrong with that? Nothing. Yeah, I want to. Name is Cock Macho. <laughs> it's okay by me. Everywhere I go, it's like you're always there.
hope you're enjoying enjoying that tune right there. That's some that's some good stuff. That is Karen Waldrop. Uh, she's got a worldwide fan base of over a million strong, growing every day. Her videos have been seen over four million times. So check that out. She's been featured in Rolling Stone magazine, People magazine, Netflix, The Hallmark, Bravo, uh, the NFL Experience for the Super Bowl. So that's that's some good stuff. Uh, CMT. She's been everywhere. Uh, picked up some awards from uh, Nashville, and then she does on Wednesday. She does a Waldrop Wednesday where she hosts a weekly online series on Country, Country Rebels Facebook page every Wednesday at 5 p.m. So you want to check that out. Uh, this new song is some good stuff. So you can check her out on every social media site out there and her website. But what we're going to do is we're going to talk to her. So how about that? Karen, what is going on? What are you up to today? Well, how's it going? I'm so thankful to be here with you guys. What an awesome day to get to hang out with you guys. I'm getting packed up, ready to head to Colorado next. Headed to Colorado. Where you, where'd you land at now? I'm in Nashville tonight. I'm about to have a rehearsal, and then we are going to head out tomorrow to sing for the Major League Baseball Association um, is south of Denver. So it'll be quite the climate change. We'll be going from Nashville to Denver, and uh, I was just practicing one of my songs called Colorado Kiss, getting ready to fly into Colorado. All right. So let's let's dig down for those that don't know uh, a little bit about you and kind of where and when the uh, the idea that kind of came to you is like, hey, I'm pretty good at singing. I think I should do this. Kind of how'd that all come together? Yeah, you know, I always sang, and then just over time, I kept writing songs, and the more songs I wrote, the more hooked I got, and next thing you know, I just was touring full-time, and as everybody knows, the ones that were touring full-time, we were hit dramatically with the whole pandemic coming, you know, happening over the last year, so we're more, our entire attitude about being on stage is renewed because we just appreciate it in a way that, I mean, we always appreciated it, but now we definitely appreciate it in a whole new light. So we're just very thankful to be able to be back out and hug people and hang out with people and, you know, move forward. Now you've kind of played all over. Now you've played overseas as well. Yes. And in fact, we were supposed to be playing there this past July, so July 2021, but actually it got moved, and now we're going to be playing in July of 2022. Um, obviously, we needed to be safe, so it was too problematic for us to go in this year, but we're going to go back next year, and we hope to play a couple countries while we're over in Europe, but I just love people. You know, I think that's my favorite part about doing this. I love people. I love cultures. I love languages and differences in different places and traveling, and I just love it. It's such a thrill. Yeah, and and what kind of response? Uh, we've been over to uh, to England a few times, over to Ireland, and you know whenever we go or I, you know we're over there, and and I've got you know my my straw hat on and everything, and it, it's kind of a different a different response from the folks. So when you go over there and, and sing to those people, what kind of response do you get? You know from the people. Well, I think the thing is about music that's really great is that it's you know everybody speaks the same language when it comes to music because it's a feeling, it's an emotion. So I think it's pretty neat to get to go to travel to places like we went to Haiti in 2018. And obviously I'm, I have such a huge heart for Haiti. I love Haiti. I'm just completely heartbroken about what's going on over there right now. Um, but whenever you're playing music for people who don't speak the same language, there's a certain element of it that's just really special because you know that they're feeling the energy. And even if they don't know the, the word or the lyric because they speak Creole or French or Spanish or whatever country you're in, it's just such a cool feeling to get to look out and know that you're connecting in the same way. It's not different. It's crazy. You would think it would be, but it's not. It's the same. And the the inspiration that you get for the songs that you write, because you are a songwriter, where do you get the, the inspiration to to put those to paper? You know, for me, and I can only speak for myself, but for me, they just come from all kinds of different places. You know, it might be something that I heard someone else say. It might be something I felt when I was on the road. It might be something I'm experiencing. It's just all different things. And sometimes it's interesting because you literally have to just kind of stop what you're doing and grab it. You have to like grab the song because it, it kind of hits you like a ton of bricks. So sometimes you can't really like force it. You know, you just have to 
You just have to take the ideas you have and try to craft them into whatever it is. And then the interesting thing is, is that you never really know what's good. You know, I've had songs over the years that I thought was great and nobody ever responded. And then I've had songs that I thought were okay that people loved. So I just kind of let the people decide. And based on how the people respond, I decide whether or not I'm going to track it, whether or not I'm going to, you know, play it, whether or not I'm going to continue playing it with the band, all the above. Okay. All right. And... You said you're fixing to head to uh, to Colorado. What do you got going on there? Where what are you headed to uh, to play at? Yeah, so we're gonna be playing. I'll be singing the national anthem and playing a an hour set at the Major League Baseball. Okay, Association. the baseball deal. Okay. Yeah, so okay. I'll be doing that, and then in September we're hitting the road again. It's actually my birthday month, uh -oh. so we'll be playing in Gulf Shores, Alabama, um, South Mississippi, and then on my actual birthday itself, we'll be in Memphis, Tennessee. So that'll be pretty neat, you know, to get to be on stage with a you know, birthday hat and get to have a birthday celebration, considering that, you know, last year everybody was very much not doing that. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to make the most of it and uh, and try to have a big party in, in Memphis. And then, and then throughout the rest of the year, we'll be playing, you know, we're all over. We'll be playing in Ohio, um, headed down to Mexico, and then we're going to be playing in uh, Florida in October. So... We still do have shows cancel. I'm not trying to say that we don't, but you know, just like we have since the beginning, we we believe in the show until it gets canceled, <laughs> and then we cancel it. So I mean, you just do the best you can and keep, try to keep a smile on your face. And you know, for any musicians that are listening, I feel you. I know exactly what you're going through. And the best thing to do is my friend Greg Warncall, who we lost tragically to COVID. He said during the year, he said, if you can't make a dollar, make a dime. And that was just such a cool thing for me to live. And I think it changed me forever. You know, I, I had to turn my music online. I had to play live for the people. I had to just kind of believe. And the fans were there. And I know for all the musicians that are listening and all the musicians that are out there, you know, we learned really for the first time how quickly the rug can be pulled from underneath us. And I think we have a whole new humble attitude about it. Yeah, it's a whole different, whole different scene out there this year. So, tell us about the the Waldrop Wednesdays. Yeah, Waldrop Wednesday is kind of like fishing. You know, I just put out a video every week on my Facebook and on YouTube, and from that video, I get new followers. And then once they follow me on whatever social media platform it is, it allows me to tell them when I'm in their town, tell them when I have a ticket link available. Tell them about a new song or video that's out. So it's, you know, it's almost like people discover me through Waldrop Wednesday. And then once they're in and once they follow me, then I'm able to share more things with them, more travel stories or Instagram stories or just anything at all. And so um, I started that in 2018, I think, or maybe seven. I can't remember. It was a long time ago, though. And so I've really just stuck true to it. And every week. I put out a video, whether it's a video I shot years ago or whether it's a brand new one, whether it's us live with the band on stage, it just gives people kind of a weekly programming that they can count on, that they can grill out in their backyard and know that it's Waldrop Wednesday or pour a glass of wine and listen to a new song. It's just, it creates this whole, um, you know, kind of like scheduled programming in radio in a, in a way or on television. It just makes people have every... Tuesday night at seven, they're watching The Bachelorette. Every Wednesday night at five, they're watching Waldrop Wednesday. So it's just been cool. It's been yeah. something the fans can count on, and it's okay. something that keeps us all grounded and together. Yeah, give you something to look forward to on the, for the next week. That's it. That's it. Well, Kara, I guess you're you're busy. I know you're getting packed and rehearsals and everything, getting ready to, to get on the road again. But uh, before we let you go, for the fans out there that are looking for your music, looking for your stuff. Where's the best place to send them? I would say KarenWaldrop.com. You know, follow me at KarenWaldrop.com. That's a great place for me to be able to, you know, send them an email. They can hear all the music there, videos, press articles. So that's our hub, you know, KarenWaldrop.com. That's where our tour schedule is. That's where our, all of our information is. And we just have such a cool thing. You know, Waldrop Worldwide is more of a lifestyle brand than just a fan base. You know, we have a community, a really strong community. And I think that only got deeper through the pandemic. Yeah. Okay. Well, Karen, we appreciate uh, you taking time to visit with us. We know you're very busy. So uh, wish you good luck on the road and uh, we'll keep uh, tuned in to your tunes.
Thanks so much for playing Over the Ocean. I really appreciate it. You guys have an awesome night. Thank you. All right, do what she said. Go to her website. Look it up. You can go on her website. You can hear all the music you want to hear is on the website. You can even buy some stuff if you want. You can even buy stuff. They have stuff. Speaking of buying stuff, go to pepperstewart.com right now and buy a t-shirt. Or not. I don't care. But anyway, t-shirts, cups, there's a lot of stuff there. People don't realize all the junk that's for sale right there. T-shirt wise, there's bath towels, there's cups, shot glasses, there's stickers, there's some and they don't they don't have my face on there. It's just a bunch of random stuff that's for sale on the Pepper Stewart show or for the for the Pepper Stewart show. It what supports the sport, as they say. And uh there's a lot of stuff. There's t-shirts. I don't know where else you're going to get a $20 t-shirt or a $30 hoodie. Uh, unless you go on to the thrift store to get uh, a custom. I mean, they're nice looking shirts, I guess. I don't know. But check them out and look at them. What else do we have going on? I guess we can dive into, uh, I guess we can do a little bit of cow stuff right quick. And... Uh, yeah, I got something about what well, they they send me. Purina want me to tell you about something. Oh, they want to tell you how to start creep feeding your calves. Um, creep feeding implantation depends on several factors. Yes, it does. Uh, benefits to the calves. You can introduce creep feed. I'm just gonna I'm gonna read you the whole essay that they sent me, but I'll give you the 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 hot point button ticket issues here. Uh, introduce creep feed to your calves. At an early age, um, about two months old, where they can really chomp it down. You ever try to chew creep feed? You ever chomped on one? Think about the cows only got teeth on one side, uh, you know, on, on top, or on bottom, or on top. So you try to chew that stuff? Um, they said, tell you to do math. If you're going to want you to do some math, consider the cost of gain relative to calf prices depending on the cattle market. Some years work better than others. Well, yeah. Can we buy more feed than what you're selling? Uh, let's see. Intakes around three to three and a half to four pounds. Continue with free choice creep feed access until weaning. All right. Creep feed your calves. There are benefits. So do it. Feed them. Uh, what else do we have lined up? We just about got through everything. Let's do the. I don't know who the toilet paper head is, but somebody the guinness world records i don't know why everybody likes these but there's a guy with a toilet paper head a guy in idaho broke the guinness world record by balancing 101 toilet paper rolls on a single roll placed on his forehead uh, david rush has broken more than 200 guinness world records through, to promote stem education he said toilet paper rolls are more difficult than his previous bowling record because the rolls aren't rigid, making it more difficult to get a balance. Uh, Rush said there's multiple failed attempts before he determined that the best shape was to stack the was a pyramid atop the inverted pyramid. All right. The serial the serial record breaker was eventually able to get 101 rolls placed. Who has a hundred rolls of toilet paper in their house? That must be Corona. Look, the people at Corona that went and bought all the toilet paper when Corona came out because they had the runs. That's who's doing this. So we should ask, we need to ask David Rush that he had the runs real bad that he bought 101 rolls of toilet paper. Well, I mean, whatever floats your boat, right? Whatever floats your boat. What else we got? Um, uh, let's see. I thought we had a money. Yeah, we got a money train. Or money, money refrigerator here this is the most interesting one that i've seen in a while that uh, they sent over this is from south korea because we are a globally syndicated show so from around the globe they watch it is a globe it's not flat i don't think i don't think i've heard it's flat but i haven't been to both edges so i'm not sure so i'll just say around the globe uh, police in south korea said they're investigating after a man bought a used refrigerator online and he found $130,000 cash taped to the bottom of it. Uh, the police said the man filed a, he filed a police report saying he was cleaning a recently delivered fridge when he found the cash. 
taped to the bottom. Investigators said they're working to identify the online seller of the refrigerator and talking to people involved in its transportation and delivery. Uh, South Korea's Lost and Found Act states the cash will become the property of the man who bought the fridge if the rightful owner can't be tracked down. Everybody and their grandma in South Korea right now is going, wait a minute, that's that's my fridge. He got my fridge. Um, in 2016, it was a documented trend of people keeping money stored in their refrigerators because of uh, record low bank interest rates in South Korea. It's reported that an average uh, refrigerator can hold $895,200 of cash, if you're wondering. If you wonder how much cash you can put in a Kamishki refrigerator, that's what you can put in there. That's what goes in it. Uh, Colorado, Karen's going to Colorado to sing, so we got Colorado here. Sheriff's deputy in Colorado reported to the residential area in which a mother bear had trapped herself in a car and has two cubs watching nearby. Did you ever watch the Bernstein Bears? And that's what this is. Didn't that wasn't the Bernstein Bears and they drive around and do stuff like this? The deputy has determined the bear had done too much damage to the inside of the car for him to get the back door open. What? So this deputy went up to a bear and was like, hey, you know what? How about I just open your back door? Why would you do that? Uh, the sheriff's office said the first attempt the first attempt failed when the bear accidentally closed the door again. So they opened the door and the bear shut it back. He's The bear's trying to drive. He's trying to go somewhere. The cop's aggravating this bear, trying to go to town, probably to get some toilet paper because I've seen that commercial too where the bears wipe their butt with toilet paper and it don't stick to the hair. So maybe they were headed to go. That bear was on the way to get the 101 rolls of toilet paper for his Guinness World Record because he had a... He had probably 50 on his head already, and he couldn't move. So he sent the bear to get toilet paper, and now the cops are jacking with the bear, trying to go get the rest of the toilet paper. Um, they finally got the door open, and the bear was reunited with its cubs. In the end, the owner was just glad the bear was released to the car, and hopefully has insurance, because does your insurance cover bear attacks on your car? I don't know. Speaking of old stuff in the old days... Uh, I stumbled across some interesting knowledge because I've got some some of those tickety talk videos out there of the uh, some segments that we did about the old old laws, old West laws still in the books that I bet you didn't know. I've got a bunch of those out there. Um, I've stumbled across another old West thing I bet you didn't know, and the fact that the movie Tombstone in the movie Tombstone uh, Val Kilmer. Which, speaking of Val Kilmer, I need to go see that dog. Anybody watch the Val Kilmer thing on HBO where it's at, where he's been filming his life since he got into movies, and now he can't talk anymore because of his throat cancer and or throat whatever, so he's got a dog. I want to I want to see that. Anyway, um, back in the movie Tombstone, the line was screwed up by him, but they let it slide. So anyway, in the 1800s, a huckle was the handle on a casket. The handle on the casket is called a huckle. The people that carry the caskets are bearers, just like pallbearers. So when Val Kilmer delivered the line and said huckleberry instead of huckle bear bearer, like it should have been, they left it in because it went so smooth. But it's not really huckleberry, it's huckle bearer. But that's something I bet you didn't know that now you do. You'll tell all your friends about it and they'll think you're nuts. And then you'll be looking at me and like, that guy's nuts. And they're going to be like, yeah, I know. I saw him on the internet. He is nuts. Uh, we got one more good one for you before we roll on out of here. Uh, behind the monster, there is a six-part documentary series called called Behind the Monster that's going to explore famous uh, horror, horror, not horrors, horror, Icons such as Freddy Krueger, Jason Voorhees, Michael Myers, and more. Uh, Candyman, Chucky, and Pinhead will also be featured in the series. Each episode is going to explore a different horror icon and will feature discussion with the filmmakers, actors from the original films. Uh, the Candyman episode, which will include interviews from the original Candyman, director Bernard Rose, stars Tony Todd and Virginia Madsen, and the new Candyman director, Nia Costa. 
uh, Chucky's installment. We'll have Child's Play creators and writers. As far as we'll have their guys, Freddy Krueger. We'll have their guys. Um, with special effects designers. Behind the Monsters will premiere on October the 26th, just in time for Halloween, on Shudder. With new episodes coming out weekly. I don't know what Shudder is, but I imagine it's another streaming service like every other streaming service that is streaming that you need to get. Because what I did is I called the satellite company that had I had TV through and I told them I don't want your TV no more. And so I got rid of it. So what I have now is just like I had as a kid. I've got an antenna outside with about 50 channels playing nothing but old movies and old stuff. That's all they show is old stuff. They show old movies and old sitcom, but it, it's, inter I, I mean, it's, it's entertaining. We've got uh, a Roku on the TV. So we watch the Netflix and the other stuff on there. But I mean, everybody and their grandma's got a streaming service and they want you to pay for it. But farm and ranch TV, you're probably, if you're not watching it on farm and ranch TV, that's your fault because it, this show's on farm and ranch TV, farm and ranch TV is free. It's a free channel on nearly all your streaming services. So you can watch this ridiculous show that you're watching now and a lot of other probably more entertaining content. So check out Farm Rush TV on your uh, streaming service because it's free all the time. What else is free? And that's the highway. And that's where I'm about to go. I'm getting out of here. See you guys on the next one.